Susan Hutton is the key on in this the cheating fashion sheet, Tabaha the Shache, the Kai the Net, the Shanali. What I'm doing is thanking you, letting you know who I am, where I come from, us as Navajo people. We tell you who, what clan we're from. I'm a descendant from Changing Woman. Everybody has a religion, but it doesn't matter. We are as one, no matter what race, color, creed, gender. We are as one. Doesn't matter the color of our skin. Should all love each other. Should all be here. Because of the history of this country and the genocide of my family, I'm an activist. I am a Dene. I was born to Dene. I go to sleep at Dene. I wake up at Net, and I'm going to walk on as a Dene. And nobody, nobody is going to take that away from me. I come from a long line from Narbonne to my three and four times great grandmother being forced on that long walk by the government to be raped, to be beaten, to be sold, to have starve, diseases. They survived that so I can be here. So it's not me that's being here, it's my ancestors. It's my grandmas, it's my aunties, it's my mother. It's my children, and it's my grandchildren. I honor them, and I thank you for honoring them. Because they laid down their corn pollen in the morning. They prayed for me. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know my name. But they prayed for me to be here. Just like when I give my, my prayers in the morning to the holy people, I thank them, and I thank the Great Spirit. I thank my children, and I thank my descendants, because I know that my quilts are going to be here long after I walk on, long after my grandson walks on, long after his children and his descendants walk on. Our story is going to be here. Nobody can take that away. Nobody, nobody is going to shut the voices of my grandmothers, my ancestors, my mothers. They're not going to shut their voices. For years, they were told, don't talk about this. So I met a gentleman, retired Senator Ben Nighthorse Campbell, and I used to make quilts for him. And what's good about trading is I get his jewelry. <laughs> but what we talked about was, uh, I, I, I gotta let y'all know, I have sarcastic happiness. That's all I gotta say. And I roll my eyes. I always tell them, because while I used to work for the military and sitting there in the meetings with all of them, and I just had to, well, I always tell them, look, I'm looking at how intelligent I am. So, so I roll my eyes sometimes. So you see in the video where I'm, you know, <laughs> so I just wanted to let y'all know. There's a thing called ledger art. And what it was was, that when uh, soldiers came, um, the traders and everybody, when you take away people's lives, we're here. We're the caretakers of this land here. When you take away our ways of life and try to impose your ways, it's not going to work. When you take away our, our, the land that we're supposed to be protecting, when you take away our art, when you're killing the buffaloes off and you're doing all the other stuff, when you're contaminating Mother Earth. We as indigenous people, it depends on what tribe you are, we are not mascots. We are, when people come up to me and ask me, what do we call you, Native American? No, I'm not a mascot. I'm not a Washington Redskin, and I'm not the rest. When you take away our life, way of lives, we will figure something out. How many of you, when you're little, drew in the dirt? Whether with your fingers, with a stick, you made mud pies, and you tried to eat them? You were making art. How many are here at Quilters? Yes. These are our original sewing machines, right? I tell people, they go, What's your, what was the first machine you used? <laughs> and it's still working. It's got a lot of knobs and cuts and everything. 
But what I, how I learned how to quilt was from my mother. And it wasn't a very pleasant time in my life. I hated quilting. I didn't teach my children quilting for the reason why is because the way I learned. And I didn't understand why I was getting hit. And so when I got older, I started talking to her. And I was like, you know, why did you always hit me? And then she explained about what she went through to the boarding school. I know some of you have five-year-old children. Or you start, they're probably grown by now. You have maybe five-year-old grandchildren. At one time or another, they're five years old. You were even five years old at one time. Can you imagine being forced to a boarding school, having your hair cut, being beaten for the language that you spoke, being raped, being sold? My mother went through a lot. My mother went through a lot for me to be here. And now I appreciate what she taught me. I no longer hate the quilt. I love it because when I'm sitting there sewing, I remember her stories. That's why I do what I do. That's why I can stand up here and tell her story. Because it didn't just happen to us, us people. Us as children, it happened to everybody. If somebody in your family went through that. So I stand up here and I make these quilts. And what I did is like how I said that we are all as one. I did this one, the indigenous children want to know why. That I just won a couple of months ago, the Jackie at the Autry Museum. It means I put down a price, entered it. Didn't think I was going to win. I was talking to people. And then people are congratulating me. And I'm like, what, what did I, what, what's going on? Well, I won for this. And what I was showing was the children, the soldiers taking the children and locking them up. <laughs> Hundreds of years later, nothing has changed. You're still taking the indigenous children, but it's the ice peak, ice with gold, I mean, with the foil blankets. Nothing has changed for us. So that was my putting down there, what are you so scared of us? But the real title is the indigenous children want to know why you're racist. Because sometimes in our lives, when you, you meet people, you know them for years, politics comes in play. And when that happens and then you start reading some of the stuff, they say, well, he pissed me off. So I said, okay, you said something stupid. This is my answer to you. Little did I know I was going to win all the awards I did. So what I've been doing lately, my next show quilt will be on something. Two stupid people said something to me. And doggone it, I'm going to make money off of them. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> That's all I can do. Sarcastic humor. <laughs> okay. So but what I wanted to do was to thank everybody for being here. Because you honor my ancestors. You honor my grandmas, you honor my mother, and you honor my grandson. And another thing what's, that I do is if you notice in the next room, I have a small piece there. The missing and murdered indigenous women, missing and murdered indigenous children, missing and murdered indigenous men. What I do is I'm an activist, like I said. I do the quilts that I did in there where I'm showing whoever kidnapped the, the young lady, it's, you know, it's happening right now. Doesn't matter if it's in this side of the world, it happens on the other side of the world. And, and so what I was showing, how horrible people are, how horrible humans are to each other, that they have no regard for human life, where they will do whatever they did to the young lady and just dumped her body and did not care. Where they show, and I was showing where the family goes out and looks for her. I'm bringing that to the forefront too because I can. Because there's so many missing 
If they were blonde hair, blue eyes, I guarantee they'd be on the TV. Y'all be looking for them. But ever since the day the invaders came, the disrespect that we get and how they feel, how people, certain people feel like they can do whatever they want to us. And it's just not us. It's other people. It's other women of color, children of color, men of color. I bring that to the forefront because we can change the clothes. And it could be your family member. Change the clothes. Go from, oh. <laughs> you can go from a soldier, someone to ice. The quote that I saw from the, uh, for the long walk, the gentleman that bought, her, bought it was a survivor from the um, Holocaust. And he told my granddaughter, he bought it because you can change the clothes, the uniform to the, the soldier and change it. That was him. That was his family. So I, when I dream these dreams, when I start seeing them, when they start coming to life, there's a certain road that I drive down on the res, on the res and I'm driving and I can feel it. And when I get to the top, top the mesa, you can see from Gallup to Shiprock, you can see for the four corners, you can feel, see all the four states. And then I start seeing it and I can start hearing them talking to me. And when I dream at nighttime, I hear the stories, I hear the cries. I can feel their pain. And I start doing my quilts. I don't do, I don't have patterns. Just start putting it together. And when I get to a part where I don't understand what I'm supposed to do, well, when I get stuck, I pray. And then it might not tell me right then and there. It might take 10 minutes. I might have to put it to the side. But then I see it. I dream it. And then all of a sudden it's right there. And I take it back out. And I do what they tell me to do. And that's what I do. And I tell our stories. To remember. What did you do today to honor your ancestors? Oh. I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to say. <laughs>